In this video, we're going to continue our work with vectors and look at another typical question we might be asked. We're told the line L1 has equation r is equal to 2, 3, minus 4, plus lambda multiplied by 1, 2, 1, where lambda is a scalar parameter. We're told the line L2 has equation r is equal to 0, 9, minus 3, plus mu multiplied by 5, 0, 2, where mu is a scalar parameter. So let's just have a look at these lines quickly. This is in the form now r is equal to a plus lambda d. So that is a vector equation of line. This is the position vector. This is the direction vector. We're given these in column form. They might be in i, j, k notation form. So we might have 2i plus 3j minus 4k plus now some multiple of i plus 2j plus k. You might even see in brackets 2 plus lambda multiplied by i, 3 plus 2 lambda multiplied by j minus 4 plus lambda multiplied by k. It says, given that L1 and L2 meet at the point C, find A, the coordinates of C. So what we want to do is now set the I components of both lines the same, the J and the K. So if we consider line L1, we will have 2 plus lambda, and this will now meet, and we will have 0 plus 5 mu. So I can write this now as 5 mu. If we consider the J components, now for L1, we've got 3 plus 2 lambda, and that will now be equal to 9 plus 0 mu. So that will just be 9. We've now got the k components, minus 4 plus lambda, and that will be equal to minus 3 plus 2 mu. What I'm going to do is simply call these equation 1, 2, and 3. Now, equation 2 is quite clearly the easiest to deal with. So if we look at equation 2, subtracting 3 from both sides, we can see 2 lambda is equal to 6. Lambda, therefore, is equal to 3 according to equation 2. I'm now going to sub that into equation 1 to find mu. So 2 plus 3 will be equal to 5 mu. We can see 5 is equal to 5 mu, so mu will be equal to 1. We now need to show that that uh, is sat or satisfies equation 3. So let's sub that in. Minus 4 plus 3, lambda is equal to 3, is equal to minus 3 plus two lots of mu, which is two. That's going to give me now minus one. That's going to give me minus one. Therefore, these satisfy that equation. So what we can now do is find the coordinates of C. I can either put mu as one into R2, or I can put lambda is equal to three into R1. I think working with mu is equal to one is going to be a lot easier. So what we're going to have then is the following. If we consider now L2, we're going to have 0 plus now 1 lot of 5. We're going to have 9 plus 1 lot of 0. We're going to have minus 3 plus now 1 lot of 2. So we want the coordinates. So in coordinate form, we can write now C. C will have the coordinates 5. Then we'll have 9 and we'll have minus 1. So that now is the point of intersection. In the next part, we're told the point A is the point on L1 where lambda is equal to 0, and the point B is the point on L2 where mu is equal to minus 1. In part B, we're asked to find the size of the angle ACB, give in our answer now to our uh, in degrees to two decimal places, and then in part C it says hence, otherwise find the area of the triangle ABC. Now, with this particular question, we could look at it as two distinct parts, or we could answer it holistically. I'm actually going to look at it as two different parts. But the first thing I'm going to do is just find now A and B. So if we consider now that A is on line 1 where lambda is equal to 0, we can say, and I like to write these in column form, we're going to have now the column form for vector A, we're going to have the following. If that is now 0, that's just now the position vector 2, 3, minus 4. If we consider B, we've got B and we're told that's where mu is equal to minus 1. So that's going to be minus 5, we're going to have 9, and we're going to have minus 5. In now position vector form, column form, C is 5, 9, minus 1. So let's draw a quick sketch of what we've got. We've got these two vectors, okay? They're intersecting now at this point C. So all I'm going to do is show the intersection and then the two lines. This is just part now of the diagram. So this is going to be the point C where they intersect. This will be L1, this will be L2. So let's put this point here. This is going to be A. A is on L1, and we can put this now as 2, 3, 
minus 4. We've got now a point down here. This is a point on L2. That is B. And B has now the position vector of minus 5, 9, minus 5. So let's just extend the page a little. Now C, if we look at C, C has a position vector of 5, 9, minus 1. So if we like, we can say that now this vector is either CA or AC. I'm going to write down that it's going to be AC. And now this vector here is going to be BC. OK, let's now look at finding the angle between these two vectors. I could go ahead and consider AC and BC. Alternatively, I can just go back to these two direction vectors. When we're finding the angle between two lines, we simply consider the direction vectors and look at what we call the dot product. A dotted with B will be equal to the modulus of A multiplied by the modulus of B multiplied by the cosine of the angle enclosed between them. So let's go ahead. As stated, I could use these two vectors, but I'm simply going to say now that A is 1, 2, 1. So let's say A is equal to 1, 2, 1. That now is the direction vector, and we have a multiple of it, some multiple of it, for line 1. 5, 0, 2 is the direction vector of line 2. So what we're going to do is dot these. So I'm going to divide through by the modulus of both of these. So we can say A dotted with B will be now over the modulus of A, the modulus of B will be equal to the cosine of the angle. OK, let's go ahead and deal with this. So I'm treating this as two separate things. I'm simply finding the angle between the two vectors. I'm not yet answering it in terms of this triangle. So what we'll have then is 1, 2, 1. We will dot that now with 5, 0, 2. We will now divide this by the modulus of both of these multiplied. So I'm going to do this in slightly, uh, I'll do it slightly quicker. In the exam, you must show your full workings. So what we'll have then is the following. If I look at the modulus of this vector right now, this direction vector, the modulus is simply 3D Pythagoras. So it's going to be 1 plus 4 plus 1. It's the square root of 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 1 squared. The modulus of the length of this direction vector is going to be 5 squared plus 0 squared plus 2 squared. So let's go ahead now and work this out. So in the numerator, we're going to have 5 plus 0 plus 2 divided now by the root of 6 multiplied by the root of 29. So that's equal to cos theta. We could go straight through this uh, if we wanted in the calculator. Just going to tidy it up. So what's that going to be? The root of 7 over now 174. So 174, and that's going to give us cos theta. Sometimes you'll be asked to give the value of cos theta in these types of questions. So this is it in its, I mean, we could even rationalise if we wish. But as, as it's going in the calculator, we certainly won't need that. So there we go. That's what we start off with. And we'll go ahead now and evaluate this. So make sure you're in degrees. Shift now cos, inverse cos of 7 over now the square root of 174. And that's going to give us 59, uh, sorry, 57.949. They want this to two decimal places. So we can say theta is equal to 57.95. Let's just check that, 57.95 degrees. So there we go. That now is the angle. So if we weren't answering this question right here, all we would do is say that the angle between these two direction vectors is given to be to two decimal places, 57.95. OK. What we're now going to do is find, it says hence otherwise, find the area of the triangle ABC. Now let's just consider this triangle ABC. What we've got then is C just here, we've got A just here, and we've got now B just here. So that's what we're after. We're going to use a basic, um, basic trig on this. Now we could use one half AB sine C. What I'm going to say then is just that this is going to be equal to P, this is going to be equal to Q. So we're going to just look at this. So the area of a triangle, area is going to be 1 half P, Q, sine, theta. Now I've used P and Q not to confuse these ones right here. Okay, So we can find that. What I need then is the modulus, the, the length of AC and the modulus of BC. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to find my area. My area can be given as this. So let's now look at AC. 
AC is equal to C minus A as we've seen in other videos. Therefore, we can say that AC is going to be now, and I'll write this in column form, we've got C minus A. So I'm going to do 5 minus 2, which is 3, 9 minus 3, which is 6, minus 1 minus minus 4, which is positive 3. So if we now look at the modulus, all I'm after now is the length of this vector AC. The modulus is going to be now the square root, and I'll write this out as I go, 9 plus 36 plus 9. So what I can say then is AC, and I'll write this up here, let's just do that. This is going to have a length of the square root of 54. So that's root 54. Remember, this is already stored in my calculator. Let's go ahead now and consider the CB or BC. So what we've got then, the vector BC will be equal to C minus B. Therefore, we can say vector BC is going to be equal to, and C minus B, we're going to have 5 minus minus 5, which is going to give me 10. We're going to have 9 minus 9, which is going to give me 0. We're going to have minus 1 and minus minus 5, which is going to give me now 4. So the modulus or the magnitude now of BC, not AC, BC, we've done AC. The magnitude of BC or the modulus is going to be, and this again is simply 3D Pythagoras, BC is going to be equal to the square root of 10 squared, which is 100, plus 0 squared, plus 4 squared. So that gives me now that this length right here is going to be the square root of 116. So all we need to do now is plug into the calculator these values. So it's going to be 1 half PQ sine theta. So 1 half root 54 multiplied by root 116 multiplied now by the sine of my angle and that angle we've got stored in the calculator as 57 so 57.94 dot 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 and so on and then we will just simply evaluate this if you want to store this in your calculator shift store a in case you make a mistake but all we're going to do is simply evaluate so 0.5 times by the square root of 54 times by 116 i can put it all under one root and then we're going to multiply this now by the sign of my answer, or if I like, what I've stored in there. Okay, so this will now give us the area, and we can see, and I'll give that to, again, two decimal places, 33.54 units squared. So that now is the area of the triangle ABC. I've simply considered now the angle between these two direction vectors. These are going to simply be now multiples of them. It doesn't matter that I found the angle using the original lines. The reason I did that is many questions will simply focus now on the angle between two vectors. That's why I did it that way, but you're more than welcome to work out now these two vectors and deal with those. Either way around, we can see that the angle should be 57.95 to two decimal places, and the area should be 33.54 units squared, and again, that's to two decimal places. So hopefully that's given you enough information to tackle questions like this if they come up on an exam.